So, um, I've been thinking about, like, the way I approach language, uh, because I feel like it makes me say some things that, uh, like, use words in a way that people don't usually, just because, just because, like, I end up getting attached to these archaic or, uh, formal usages. And, um, like, an example of this, I think, is arrogate. So, you know the word arrogant. Um, uh, the word arrogant uh, basically means, well, I'm going to assume you know what it means, because honestly, I'm not sure it means that. Uh, the thing is, ar arrogant's an insult, right? Uh, you think someone's a total jerk, uh, like, snobby and snooty, and they're not listening to anybody, and they're just doing their own thing, and... Uh, if you ever saw the BBC Sherlock, the Stephen... the Moffat one, not, like, any of the earlier ones, but, like, the Moffat Sherlock, like, God, that guy is so arrogant. It, it's, it's infuriating. Uh, but... So, the thing is... A lot of insults are basically where society keeps its prejudices. Like, there's so many ableist terms that are insults. And, like, people talk about... Uh, when they want to say that someone isn't paying any attention, isn't, like, acknowledging the reality that is there for them to observe, they'll call that person blind. And your eyes are not the only way you observe. Blind people are just as perceptive or oblivious as anyone else. It makes blindness out like it's a character flaw, as opposed to a physiological condition. So, I wanted to ask myself, okay, this is an insult, I kind of, like, I'm used to it, but what does it mean? Uh, so, so I was looking at, like, the etymology of arrogant, and, uh, this was a while ago, so I don't remember all the details, but it has to do with, like, rank in society. And stuff. A, a person is arrogant if they get above their place. Is actually like if you go all the way back, you get into like you are asking something you do not have permission to ask, as part of the history of the word arrogant. And that's how I got into the idea of er of of arrogating as a word that I use and just spontaneously use under circumstances because it's like to say someone is arrogating some position is to say that that position requires something for you to deserve. And then, when you say this person's arrogating a position, or you don't say it, you just kind of assume it, usually, like someone will be like, how, how dare you question my decisions? You don't know what you're talking about. Like that is a person saying, I am worthy of this position. I am worthy of having an opinion, and you are not. And honestly, that kind of person is the kind of person we call arrogant, uh, ironically. But like the arrogant, that their their arrogance is not that they are claiming position that they don't have a right to. Their arrogance is that they're throwing everybody out. It's, out. it's kind of an inverse, actually. But um, yeah, like I think arrogant. It, it's, I mean, the place where it does kind of still work is with. People who don't have a clue what they're talking about, like you get a lot of, you get a lot of people in like STEM fields who they spent their entire career where the humanities was a joke, it was a punchline, it was oh this person you know communications majors, you know what communication majors are like, folding ideas Dan Olson communication major brilliant guy, no you don't know what communications majors are like if you're sitting in the uh, mechanical engineering lounge with a bunch of mechanical engineers who've never studied communications. They, they don't have a clue. They're just making assumptions because communication majors don't have as much math training as they do. It's a problem. I mean, it goes the other way, too. Like, there are all kinds of literature people who are like, oh, you don't understand any of the joy of life because you spend your time looking at the amazing physical world in all its wonder and glory and not reading books about dead white guys. Basically, the moral of the story is that there's a lot of misunderstanding and, like, misinterpretation. But anyway, 
this misunderstanding, misinterpretation leads to arrogance when you're looking at someone else's field. You're like, this person doesn't know what they're talking about because they're not one of us. Um, they're not, they don't know math, therefore they can't have anything important to say about public policy. Which is, yeah. That's, that's a case where I would say the word arrogance sort of fits, because it's, it's, you are assuming that you have a competency that you don't, you're assuming that you have a, uh, you're assuming that you have some kind of value, your opinion on this matter has some kind of value that it doesn't, because you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but, like, I think, honestly, it, thinking about it as a hierarchical way also kind of makes you notice, like, like when people are talking about arrogance, you have to ask, what hierarchy are they defining by their feelings around arrogance? Try to arrange for the camera, but I don't think there's a good way, so I'm just going to... I got this tip from a friend of mine. Uh, so with green teas, and I was using some gunpowder green tea, you want to have the water that you pour into the pot at significantly below boiling. I forget what the temperature is, like 170 or something. And I don't have a teapot with like a thermostat in it, so I can't just hit the green tea button and get my tea to the right temperature. But I was talking about how like, I'm trying to figure out a way to do this, and my friend was like, add cold water to the boiling water. And I found that a ratio of one liter of boiling water, and it's only one liter because like that's the bottom measurement on this kettle, one liter of boiling water to 400 milliliters of tap water works pretty well for me. And then um, I let it brew for not very long. I'm going to take this lid off again in a second. I let it brew for not very long because uh, if you brew the tea for too long, you get a lot of tannin flavor. And while I like tannin, there's something very special about uh, a green tea that doesn't have much tannin. Uh, because it ends up being really sweet. Like, green tea, apparently, it's the only tea where people rarely add stuff to it. It doesn't need sugar or milk or honey or lemon. Like, people just drink green tea as it comes out of the leaves. Just straight. The liquid... The, the, I think they call it liquor? That is produced by the steeping of the leaves. Anyway, I, uh, this is kind of an experimental format, and I don't know where I'm going here. I just wanted to talk about... Sometimes I use language in a weird way, and sometimes it's a little confusing. But I just... Like, I learn stuff. And when I can put ideas into a context, when I can be like, you know what? This... This thought of... This word, which previously in my life was just an insult. An insult that had a vague idea of what it meant, but an insult. Uh, fits into a kind of model of how you understand the world. And there are things that you can say as a response to that. So, yeah. Um, if you want to watch a completely different kind of breaking down of a very similar word. Uh, Kyle Caldwin did a video about pretentious, a concept of pretentious, and I don't agree with all of it, but it was incredibly informative. Anyway, I'm going to drink my tea.